it should be working. Welcome uh, to all of you from uh, your home, my home to your home. This is uh, the webinar on uh, the Grand Place, the grand place to be, the title of uh, the temporary exhibition, still taking place in uh, La Maison du Roi. Have magnificent aerial view of uh, the Grand Place of Brussels and uh, the City Hall on one side, and on the other side, of course, uh, La Maison du Roi, or Hot Grotas, as uh, we call it in uh, Flemish. Uh, my name is Dirk, I'm Dirk van Roy. I'm a guide in uh, La Maison du Roi. And uh, first of all, before starting, I have to thank uh, uh, people who are assisting me. Uh, and that's uh, Eleanor Duchesne and uh, Remy Foulon. So if anything goes wrong, uh, you have to blame them. I'll try not to do too many stupid things. Anyway, you can ask questions. You should have somewhere Q and A on your screen uh, where you can um, ask all questions you want. I will try to answer to these questions at the end of the webinar, which will last approximately 45 minutes. And then we have some 15 minutes to answer. I have 15 minutes to answer to your question. So I'd say, let's go and let's go to La Maison du Roi, uh, the building, as I mentioned, uh, which is the one to the left. I'll get my little pointer, laser pointer, voila, there it is. So this is this building, actually is the youngest building on the square, the oldest building being this beautiful building, the city hall of, uh, of course, of Brussels, the grand place and all the houses around is, uh, of course, uh, not a very young place. It's a very old lady, as we could call, uh, should call it. And it was, um, uh, UNESCO, UNESCO in, uh, two, in 1998. And uh, to commemorate the 20th anniversary of this uh, fact, uh, we had this exhibition, or we still have this exhibition in La Maison du Roi. Um, you should go into the building. This today is the first uh, Sunday of the month, the first Sunday of uh, August, which means that uh, entrance is free. So you don't have to pay an entrance ticket. And moreover, you have, uh, you receive a guided tour of the exhibition taking place right here. Um, I'd say let's go in and uh, let's try to go to uh, the exhibition. First of all, you came uh, on foot, of course, you arrived on the Grand Place and uh, the seven streets leading you to the Grand Place, they all have this sign in the floor. It's the sign, of course, of the UNESCO heritage. Um, and that's, of course, because we're so proud that we are UNESCO heritage. But how did we get that far? Well, have a look at this. This is the maquette. You can find it on the first floor of the house of the La Maison du Roi. And of course, uh, it's a very old, the maquette is not that old, but it shows you the city in the 13th century. You have the River Zenne right here. So you see my little pointer going over there. This is the River Zenne. Right beside was a monastery, a Franciscan Friar Monastery going up. This is the Marché aux Herbes, uh, Gerasmarkt, as we call it in Flemish. And the church you meet over here is St. Nicholas Church. Right beside was the market, Nedermark. So Nedermark means low market because it was close to the river. There was probably some markets uptown, higher markets. But this is the Nedermark, probably the first center, the first market that we had. Right beside is the Belfry. So already in the 13th century, we have this uh, stone building, the belfry of the city. And when you go a little bit further, then you arrive over here. And that is what we call the Gemeene Markt. The Gemeene, uh, it's not mean, it's uh, general, the general market. So everything was sold over there. And you notice that there are several houses around here. And that little house, you see little breads, there's a loaf of breads, that's the bread hall. Rothaus, as we still call it in Flemish, because originally the bread was sold over there. Later in the 15th century, the Duke constructs a house on that same spot, and the Duke becomes king, the king of Spain, uh, in the 16th century, and that's uh, Charles, Charles V. And from that time on, the house is called Skonings House. And later, when people start speaking French in the city, it will be, uh, or, or it will become La Maison du Roi. 
right behind it, this is a little uh, well, pieces of meat. So that's the meat hole right there. And uh, the square in, uh, as I already mentioned it, of course. Let's go on, move on to the second floor of the Maison du Roi. And this is what you see in the middle of that beautiful room. Uh, it's uh, Archangel Michael, Saint Michael. We have placed him on top of the city hall in 1455. Well, we did not. Maarten van Rode, who made the sculpture, uh, it's uh, approximately five meters tall. And uh, well, it's very difficult to see it from down where we are in the middle of the square because uh, everything is in total 97 meters high. But uh, this is a beautiful 15th century knight with all the details you can see here. Uh, and his armor is a uh, sword, of course, here. And then uh, the devil, because uh, he's uh, killing the devil or evil. And that's what he does, of course. He protects the city against evil. And uh, that's why he's the same patron, patron of uh, the city of Brussels. Oops, going to the 17th century, 1648. In the middle, you have Philip IV, King of Spain, and also our king. And uh, this is his city. This is the city of Brussels. Now, Brussels was protected since the 13th century by a, a wall, a protective wall, four kilometers long. You can still find some pieces of that wall in the city. But uh, in the 14th century, as the city became bigger and bigger, and uh, well, we wanted to protect everyone, we have constructed a se second defensive wall. You can still find that wall. Uh, well, the wall itself is gone, but the place where it originally stood is uh, what we call La Petite Ceinture nowadays, a little belt road around the city, approximately eight kilometers long, and uh, we had seven gates seven gates to take you in and out of the city. And this is the one you can see right here, is the uh, Vlaams support. Vlaams support, this is the road to Flanders, the Chaussée de Gand, voilà, right there. And then you have, of course, the moat and the defensive wall. Going that way, uh, going to the right, you have the Porte de Ninov, you have the Porte d'Anderlecht, and then you have the Porte de Hal, the only gate remaining. Uh, it's a uh, a museum nowadays, you can uh, still go inside. Uh, beautiful museum, by the way. Um, very old, 14th century. Uh, continuing that way, you have uh, that's where Avenue Louise is, where the Palace of Justice is situated. Uh, continuing, you arrive, uh, well, right behind is the Porte de Namur, gate leading you to Namur. Going down, you arrive on the Place Royale, the Koudenberg, as it's called, the Cold Mountain. And on the cold mountain, on top of the cold mountain, there was a palace, the palace of, of course, uh, Charles V, uh, the Duke's, eventually Charles V Cathedral being right there. But we are here. This is St. Michael, and this is the city hall. 1615. Uh, Fantastic date. At that moment, we have uh, a governess, and she's called Isabella, in Infante Isabella. Her father is Philip II, King of Spain. Her grandfather is Charles, Charles V, and she resides in the city of Brussels to rule over us. And uh, as she wants to show her brother, the King of Spain, that she's doing very well and that the city is thriving, um, this is the Omega. The Omegang is still taking place uh, every year. Normally, it should have taken place this year as well. Uh, we should have had uh, more than 1,400 people on the square, dressed uh, exactly like these people over here. But uh, I, we will have to come back next year to see the beautiful show. Uh, but this is the Grand Place, as you can see, of course, people parading. It's a great parade, of course, uh, archers, Arquebusier and people with uh, guns, shotguns of the, uh, and then the same patrons. Uh, you have Saint George over here and the dragon, the dragon and the princess of Trebizonde, uh, Saint Christopher over there. You also have Saint Michael who came down from the spire of the city hall, and then uh, you have Saint Gudula, Saint Gudula right here. Uh, you see that the devil is trying to put out her uh, her candle. 
What is interesting for us, of course, is not only the, the beautiful show, but it's also the houses on the square. This is the bread hall. So actually, right now, we are here in this part. The show is uh, over there. But when you look carefully to the house, you can see that uh, several facades are still wooden facades. Now, the city uh, decided that uh, all the houses should be constructed in uh, brick and stone uh, and materials that can't burn down. But some houses uh, still had to mend or change the facades and still have these wooden facades, en encorbellement, as we call them. So each story is uh, hanging over a little bit as uh, compared to the one below. Uh, and you can see that you can put a lot of people over there. Uh, on this side, on the right side, right of the bread hall, of the Maison du Roi, you already have some facades, uh, Renaissance facades in uh, stone. Uh, and this is the house of the tailors. You can see the scissors. And this house is the dove, uh, the house of the, of the painters. But uh, oh, I think you can feel the heat. Uh, 1690, there is a fire in one of the houses on the square. Um, and it's uh, the wolf, the house, the wolf, and that's the house of the archers uh, is burning. And you see the people taking water from the fountain over here, right in front of La Maison du Roi. So we're still here. Uh, we have to go down and take buckets of water and try to get up the ladder and. Uh, put out the fire and unfortunately it will not succeed and the house will burn down but fortunately the houses right beside will be spared when you look to the left you have the city hall you have noticed already everyone sees that that uh, the left part is bigger than the right part because uh, this part was constructed in 1402 and then uh, well actually we just finished with this part of the of the tower and then 40 years later, we have added the second part because the building was too small. And as you can see, there was already the houses over there. So we could not make it symmetric. And that's the reason why the house or the city hall is not symmetric. So forget about the architect throwing himself down from the, from the tower, committing suicide because he had made a mistake. He did not make a mistake, of course. He constructed, uh, Jan van Rusbroek did, constructed a beautiful tower right over there and then putting St. Michael on top. This is a very narrow street, the Sterrestraat, the Star Street, and it's called Karel Bulstraat nowadays, uh, Rue Charles Bult. It's called that way because this house is called the Sterre, the Star. It's the house of the Amman, and the Amman is the chief of police. You can see this is a very, very narrow house. The house will be destroyed later on in the 19th century because it stood in the way, but you will see uh, what uh, more about that, of course. Now, after the wolf burned down, it had to be reconstructed. It had to be rebuilt. And it is Peter Herbusch, who is uh, the one who is allowed to make plans for the new building. And you can see that he got his inspiration uh, with uh, the, the Romans. Uh, the he-wolf becomes a she-wolf because you have Remulus and uh, Remus, right, uh, Romulus and Remus, excuse me, right over there, a symbol of archers right there, four Roman emperors right there, and Apollo with his uh, arrow and his bow uh, killing the snake. And on top of that beautiful building, you have uh, the phoenix rising up from the ashes. Uh, and that's what happened because the house was reconstructed in 1691. But then, ta-da! We are uh, on the 13th, 14th, and the 15th of August, 1695. Disaster happens to the city of Brussels because the city is attacked. Uh, Maréchal de Villeroy, who was uh, not really the best uh, general uh, the French ever had. They had uh, perhaps some worse, but they had much better than this one. But uh, he was uh, leader of the army of Louis XIV, Louis XIV, and Louis wanted to prove that he was superior. And so he had the city of Brussels uh, bombed, a bombardment, and they shot, as you can see that the flying uh, bombs. So there was uh, metal cannonballs, uh, they were heated so warm, they were uh, burning hot, and they were shot from uh, the height of Anderlecht, Schoet, 
that was where they stood, and shooting at the city, and the, sh the city uh, burned down, well, a big part of the city burned down. Uh, this house is uh, a, the only house that was remaining. In the beginning, we had three stone houses on the square, and this is the Serreugskind uh, stain, so, and that's still in its original form. It will be uh, a little later on, it will be transformed. And then you have the original belfry, right beside St. Nicholas Church. You can see that uh, it's very hot where we are, right there. So the King's House is also burning. And the City Hall itself is also burning, but fortunately the spire was not touched, so it remained, the outside walls remain, but inside uh, everything burned down. So tapestries, um, paintings, Rubens paintings, van der Weyden, they all burned down and, and the memory of the city was, uh, of course, uh, taken away. So this is what the city looks like after the bombardment. Uh, Augustin Coppens is, uh, well, he's an inhabitant of Brussels. Uh, his house as well was uh, destroyed. So you have to, to see where you are, actually. You come from uh, the gallery, the gallery Saint-Hubert, uh, the royal galleries, and then you come onto the, to the square. And, uh, you know, looking to your right, this is what uh, you saw in 1695, this is what remains of the city hall. You can see that, uh, well, it's still a big part that remained. By the way, there was no sculptures in the facade, almost no, no approximately uh, 30 sculptures. So in the 19th century, we will add a lot of sculptures. But at that moment, there was only a little. And then you can see what happened to uh, the She-Wolf, uh, House of the Arches. You can see the Church of St. Jerry, who is uh, a little lower. The belfry was also touched was also well burned down but uh, it remained and this is what remains of uh, where we are la maison du roi uh, you can see here, right here débris d'une partie du grand marché depuis uh, le coin de la heuvelstraat vers saint nicolas saint nicolas is the church you will see over here and we're standing in uh, the heuvelstraat la rue uh, de la colline Right after, so the beginning of the 18th century, we have reconstructed the square. Uh, we did it very fast. We had to, of course, uh, when your city is in ruins, uh, all rich people will move out and we, don't, we didn't want to, leave, to, to lose the rich people. So we reconstruct uh, the square as fast as possible. And uh, that's the result. So you can see, uh, it looks exactly as uh, it looked before. Uh, well, some minor changes took place. Um, you have uh, Phoenix is still there, but uh, Apollo is gone. He was not reconstructed. You still have uh, the four Roman emperors over there, so should have been here. Uh, and uh, this house also is a new one. This is uh, Don Koning van Spain, the King of Spain because the French attacked us, because uh, our big boss was the king of Spain, and that's that guy here, Carlos II, El Hechizado, the Bewitched, is his, uh, that's what he was called, uh, has his face uh, right here, uh, and you also have his face here on La Maison des Bateliers, so that's uh, the house of the people working the boats, sailors, uh, right beyond, beside archers, and then you have uh, we have carpenters here, you have vetovarius, yes, uh, and that's people selling fat and, and candles and things like that. And this is the house of the bakers, Don uh, Koning van Spagna. You can see that, uh, of course, there is actors over here. There is, uh, yeah, you can see that the city is already very, very multicultural, almost as multicultural as it is today, um, but uh, probably a little less. You have uh, designs, drawings made by Ferdinand Joseph de Rons, and he drew all the facades of uh, the Grand Place. And it's thanks to these drawings that we were able to renovate the houses uh, as they looked like uh, in the beginning of the 18th century. Um, you have, uh, yeah, Saint Boniface right here. So they have the Heuvelenstraat to the right. You come from. Uh, the gallery right here and you come to the ground plus and then you have all the houses and you can see that everything was reconstructed after the bombing the bombarding of the city 1697 so many houses have dates 1696 97 98 was reconstructed uh, like they looked before the 
bombing. Um, this is not one house. It looks like one house because uh, we have 39 numbers, house numbers on the square. And people believe that this is a big palace. Already heard uh, people uh, telling their children that uh, the big building with the tower, that the cathedral, that's what we call the city hall. And this is the city hall. That's what they believe. They believe that this is one building. It's not one building, of course. You can see that there is two entrance doors right here. And there is two more there. And there is two more there. And there is a, even a seventh right here. So actually, it's six houses. Yeah? You say have one house, and then there is a second house, and then a third house, and you have six houses, but behind one facade, because uh, the person who ruled over us, uh, Maximilian II, Emmanuel of Bayern, he wanted a modern capital looking in this modern style, just like this. But uh, this is something we do not like. If we have a, a house leaking like, like that and the neighbor, our neighbor will probably construct something completely different. And it, when it's the same, we will paint it completely different, of course, because we do not like to have the same house as our neighbors. In 1850, you can see that a disaster happened. The city still looks like it looked after the bombardment. Uh, the houses still have the same facades. So you still miss uh, uh, Apollo right there. But uh, what you absolutely miss is uh, something looking good. Because you can see the scaffolding right here holding uh, the spire of uh, the city hall. Because everything is falling down. So absolutely something had to be done. And fortunately, we will have a mayor uh, called Karel Bulls, Charles Bulls, a little later. And he will try to save the city. Well, he will be able to save a big part of the city, an old part of the city. He was not able to save everything because the king at that moment was Leopold II, uh, not in 1850. We speak uh, in 1865, that was. And Leopold II wanted a modern capital and not one with a stinking river uh, in the middle and then the river was taken away because it uh, looked and it smelled like an open sewer so all the houses over there were destroyed were taken down and that's why you have the pedestrian zone nowadays and uh, he also wanted to well something like uh, a new square but uh, Carol Bills was able to save it and we had to do something of course you could not leave it like this so they have the Sterrestraat here you can see a very very narrow passage and you can see that uh, all of a sudden the passage it's not very visible but you have to imagine right there is a big passage because you can see the cochet of there so you can see a horseman uh, sitting on a carriage coming from that street which is much wider than it uh, used to be because the thing is that we have a south station and a north station Gare du Midi and Gare du Nord and uh, when you arrived in the south station you wanted to go to north station as there was no subway like in Paris, uh, you had to get off the train and walk to the other side of the city or take a carriage and uh, you passed on the square right there, but that was a bottleneck. So the house of Sterre was destroyed and the result is a huge gap. It looked horrible. But anyway, what you can see is that the houses were renovated and the city hall itself is also renovated. So it looks beautiful again. Fortunately, it looks beautiful again. It had to look beautiful again. It's a big painting, actually. It's almost four meters tall, and it's also to be seen uh, in the show on the second floor of uh, La Maison du Roi. La Maison du Roi, this is where we are, but this is not the house we're in right now. This is uh, the old one that was the one that was reconstructed after 1695 and it was reconstructed the same way it looked before but uh, towards uh, the end of the 19th century it was so worn out that uh, renovating was apparently not possible so the house was uh, unfortunately destroyed and a brand new one appeared and that's the one where we are in right in front of uh, the Maison du Roi, you have the Counts of Egmont and Horne. The Counts were beheaded uh, in the 16th century, in 1568, because, uh, yeah, apparently they were not uh, Catholic again uh, uh, or enough. 
uh, in the eyes of uh, King Philip II and the Duke of Alba. So that's the place where they were beheaded to make us change our minds. And that's what we did. Um, and then uh, they received their sculpture right there, uh, but it was taken away. When you want to see this sculpture, you have to go to the Petit Sablon. So it's a beautiful neighborhood. You have the Sablon Church. And right behind this beautiful little park, one of the nicest little parks in the city center. And uh, right there, you will find Counts of Egmont and Horda. And behind the Count of uh, Egmont, you will see the palace of the Count of Egmont. Uh, but that's something completely different, of course. Moving on, uh, you have this beautiful ivory sculpture made by Julien Dillens. And it was made to thank the architect uh, of the city, Mr. Jamar. Mr. Jamar is the one who will uh, renovate the city hall itself. Inside, everything will be, uh, well, receive a makeover. Uh, when you visit the city hall of Brussels, you do have to visit the city hall of Brussels. It's uh, possible on Wednesday afternoons and Sundays. Um, but when you are inside, you will see that uh, a big part uh, of it is 19th century because uh, Mr. Jamar has, uh, well, he turned it into a neo-Gothic building, partly. And uh, what you can see in the right hand of that lady, that's uh, the old uh, Maison du Roi, and this is the one we have right now. Of course, it's an ivory sculpture, again, of course, because, uh, yeah, in 1895, our king is still Leopold II, and he owns the Congo, and there's lots and lots of elephants uh, wearing huge tusks um, and uh, well the material that was used at that moment is of course uh, ivory this is uh, what the uh, complex looks like in uh, the 19th century towards the end of the 19th century the city by the way was called uh, la ville blanche uh, the witte stadt the white city for a simple reason. So after the bombardment of the city in 1695, the city was, or the square uh, anyway, was reconstructed very fast. And uh, we used uh, materials that we found in the debris. So we had to reuse uh, a lot of materials. So the high that we were not able to uh, construct the houses completely anew, uh, we had to paint them white and all the facades were white or, or yellowish, and that's what you see right here. Um, this one is uh, called, is the hel helmet nowadays, and you can see that it says, à la vue de l'hôtel de ville, so when we can see them, they can see us, of course, so it means that we are in the city hall. Um, it's the Bulls, Kyle Bulls, uh, managed to find an agreement between the city and the owners of the houses, uh, so the owners are forced or obliged, of course, to keep the houses as they are and uh, to keep them in good shape. And that's a very important thing. You can see that it says uh, houses 34 to 39, uh, and that's what we have. So that's the last of the houses on the square here, right? number 39. And this is number one. This is the Koning van Spanje, yeah? this is the, the king of Spain, Philip II. In 1880, you can still see that the houses uh, look the same. Uh, and this state not only look the same, but it's the same house. It's uh, the, uh, the house of the Dukes of Brabant. Uh, the Dukes of Brabant, you can see them right there. You have their busts right here. Dukes of Brabant. So this is the big house with the uh, six entrance doors, as I told you. But you can see that they were painted in uh, different colors. And uh, it's called... Uh, the, the market at that moment is dog market because uh, dogs are sold uh, right here on the on the market. Uh, probably Zinnekes, uh, you know what uh, the name where the name Zinneke comes from. Zinneke uh, is uh, not a purebred dog; it's a it's a bastard, uh, and that's uh, what most of the inhabitants of Brussels are called Zinnekes, because. Uh, parents of uh, the inhabitants of Brussels were probably not born in Brussels. And when you are born in Brussels and your parents are born in Brussels, you're called a catcher. So I can call myself a catcher, but that's something completely different, of course. Who's this nice guy? Charles Bulls. Charles Bulls, you can see him uh, close to the Grand Place. 
he has a, has a sculpture, a huge sculpture, uh, right beside the Grand Place, uh, sitting there with his dog. He looks like an artist, and he was an artist. He was a goldsmith, and he had his shop on the Marché aux Herbes, Grasse Marque. So there's a street running right beside the city uh, on the Grand Place. And that's where he had his shop until he went into politics and uh, became alderman and eventually became mayor of Brussels until 1999, where apparently he stepped down because he didn't agree to what the king, Leopold II, wanted to do to the city. And he had to give in, actually. Exposition Universelle 1910. In 1910, there is a World Fair taking place in Saul Bosch. So that's where you had the Avenue des Nations, uh, where you have the uh, Franklin Roosevelt uh, Avenue right now, and where you have the buildings of uh, ULB. And that's uh, the place where the World Fair took place uh, in 1910. Unfortunately, it burned down at the end of the World Fair. Uh, it's a big fire, big disaster. But uh, to announce the World Fair, uh, something beautiful is shown. And uh, of course, that's uh, our square. That's our Grand Place. So what you see here to your right is uh, the City Hall, of course. Uh, at that moment, there is already sculptures in the facade. They arrived there uh, in the second part of the 19th century. And then you have a reconstruction of it. That is really very difficult to see, but you have to go on the square, of course. This is the idea of this, uh, this show, of this webinar. You will have to go yourself to the, to the Grand Place and look at all the houses. And you will notice that the house right there, the star, is not the original star anymore, but it's the house that's constructed on pillars. Uh, that way, the carriages could pass underneath, and we did not have the battle, bottleneck anymore. And as we had some space uh, right there, we have put the sculpture of uh, Tserklas right there. Tserklas, who was an old man in the city, who was, uh, uh, he fell into an ambush and uh, his tongue was cut out and he died in the house right there. And uh, he received the sculpture right there, the brewer's house. And then further on, of course, this big building is uh, the Dukes of Brabant. So it's not one house. You know that now, of course, you know that it's six houses and even a seventh house entrance door of that. And this house is actually not on the square. So it does not have a number on the square. There's only 39 houses, as I told you, who have their numbers on the, on the square. You can see that, of course, there is also flowers on the square. We have every two years, we have a flower carpet on the square, but not this year, not this year. You will have to come back. Two years, uh, it should have taken place this year, but it will be, it's postponed, of course, uh, takes place next year. No problem. We will have everything we missed this year. It will be a very, very busy year, of course. About the renovation, um, during Carol Bull's time, um, the square was renovated, the houses were renovated, and it did a good job, but not a perfect job. The thing is that uh, they used a lot of metal, metal beams uh, uh, in the houses. And, you know, the problem with metal is uh, when it becomes humid, it may rust, and when it rusts, it pushes. Um, on the facades and some of the facades were almost coming down which was quite dangerous uh, so we had to do something about it and we started doing that in 2004 and it took us um, well until 2018 uh, not only that the rusting metal beams were taken away but also the sculptures that were damaged because you have to know perhaps you know it you parked your car yourself on the square, well, I did a very long time ago. It was a parking lot, uh, very difficult to find space over there. You had to turn around or drive around uh, at least three times before finding someone leaving the square. But anyway, the exhausts, car exhausts, damaged uh, the sculptures a lot, and uh, it had to be had to be renovated. That's what taking place right here by this gentleman. And of course, we had to put back all the gold that was gone, was almost gone. You do have to know that uh, originally it's only the guilds houses who had uh, metal gilding or gold uh, on their facades, of course. But in 1958, you remember the World Fair. And for that occasion, we have gilded 
most of the houses, and not to say all the houses, because we thought that a lot of gold will be very good for the tourists. So since 1958, a lot of gold. And uh, now we had to take the decision this uh, time uh, during uh, the renovation, what do we do? Do we only uh, put gold on the guilds houses or do we do that on all the houses? Well, the houses with a lot of gold were the guilds houses, but all the other houses have also received gold and it's pure gold. I heard a colleague of mine telling tourists that uh, it's not real gold. It really is real gold, approximately worth of 40,000 euros per house. And that was paid for not by the owners of the houses, but by the city of Brussels and the agglomeration. I have already come to the end of my webinar. You can see that uh, you see some websites over here and you also see down here information and guided tours, uh, service de public at brucity.be and that's uh, the address where you have to mail to to ask for a guided tour. Uh, not that you have to, but it would be very nice and I would love, I would love to guide you around, of course, in uh, La Maison du Roi. Uh, taking all necessary precautions, of course, but uh, it would be a very good thing if you uh, would do so. If not, perhaps you could come back uh, the first uh, Sunday of uh, September. Uh, today you can still go, it's still open until five o'clock and it's free as I told you and it would be free again in uh, September. And uh, voila, I hope to meet you right there. The uh, night view of the, of the square, it's uh, LED lights we have over here. Uh, La Maison du Signe, that was the house of the um, butchers. And then of course you have the brewer's house with Charles de Lorraine on top, a very, very nice house, of course. Um, I will have a look to see whether someone asked a question. Yup, that should be right there. Oh, by the way, I see that there are 13 people uh, looking right now, uh, participating, so that's already good. No questions. Oh, that's, uh, that's too easy. I uh, would have preferred a question, uh, anything uh, about the square, of course. No. Well, if not, I can't force you to ask a question. Uh, I would say thank you fine for now. And uh, hopefully uh, I will see you in the Maison du Roi or on the square or somewhere in uh, the city of Brussels. Um, maybe remind where is the question and answers? Where is question and answers? Oh, for the people who don't know where uh, the question and answers are, to the left of your bottom left of your screen, when you go down with uh, the mouse, you should see in, in my screens, uh, left, bottom left, uh, Q and A. Um, and uh, when you see Q and A, you can uh, press uh, over there, and you can uh, type a question. Uh, I see that uh, someone says, Thank you very much, and I thank you uh, very much uh, as well. Um, as I don't see, as I don't see questions, uh, I thank you for now, and uh, hopefully see you soon. And uh, stay safe, stay healthy, of course. Bye.